We're going to jump into GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a free application that you can download for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Go to GIMP.org to get yours today. And uh, it's basically like a Photoshop clone. You're going to see mm -hmm. it in just a moment. Uh, this is number 16 of our 20 weeks of GIMP tips. And uh, tonight, we're actually going back in time. Krista's going to be joining us from episode number 333 as we look at how to actually create a mock-up of a space scene using the GNU image manipulation program. And first thing we're going to do is create a new canvas. So that's File, New. And let's say we're going to create this. Uh, what screen resolution do you work in typically, Krista, as far as your computer goes? Uh, you know? I believe it's... 1024 by, I don't know. Oh, it's a, it's a fairly small screen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are crying. What's wrong, Sasha? <laughs> I have never seen Robbie with hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. It's too much for me. <laughs> Sasha.exe has stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> I will compose myself. <laughs> and now, more from episode 333. Okay. Yeah, it's just a laptop. Well, let's, let's go with, uh, like, let's go with, say it's 1080p. So, uh, th this is just the resolution. It doesn't really matter, but you want it to be big enough that it's usable. So, I'm going to go 1920 by 1080, just so it's a nice big canvas, all right? So there's my canvas to start working on. That's what we're going to draw on. So you look at that kind of a picture. Of course, you're going to think, this is going to be a lot of work to sit there and of dab course. all the stars, put all those stars everywhere, draw a beautiful planet, and do these solar flares and things like that. Once you get this routine down, you're going to be mm -hmm. able to do this with free software, mind In you. In your sleep. Not even. It, it, five minutes, and you'll be able to rock out one of these photos. And you saw how realistic cool. this looks. So, so let's actually do it. Let's see if this can actually be done. We're on live TV tonight. I've created my blank white canvas. I'm going to right-click on my canvas and go Filters. And what we want to do is we want to add our stars. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, add our basically like noise. But I think what, I, what I'd actually want to do first, rather than getting into complicated inversion and stuff, I'm going to actually fill my canvas with black. Does that make sense? It's a space scene. Um, there's a black foreground color, so what I've done is I've just filled with foreground black. Okay. Let's make a new layer so that we can manipulate that background layer later. And on that layer, let's right click and go filters, noise, and we're going to go hurl. And you may think as you click on hurl, uh, I'm just going to use the default settings, 50% uh, randomization and repeat one. Random seed is 10. I'm just going to hit uh, I'm going to turn on randomize, actually, instead of a random seed there, and hit OK. Just so, so that just adds a whole bunch of noise, basically. It's like white noise. But you see that that actually starts to, it kind of looks like stars, but they're colorized. So what we need to do is we need to decolorize that, or what's the word that we would use is desaturate. So it's one of our filters, and we go with a luminosity desaturation. But in fact, before I do that, I, I find, I don't know about you, Krista, but that's a really star-heavy really universe, is. right? Yeah. That's so like there's just, Star Wars. There's too many stars, <laughs> okay? So in order to get rid of those, while it's still a color, I haven't desaturated yet, while it's still color noise, I'm going to go into my colors filters and do levels which you're familiar with from Photoshop, if you use Photoshop. And grab the, uh, the shadow one, which is on the far left here, the triangle there that I'm dragging, and drag closer to the right. And you'll see what starts to happen is some of those stars, or the noise, starts to disappear. There we go. So when I, when I found a spot that seems pretty good to me, then I can hit OK. You'll notice, too, that I've pressed the one key on my keyboard, so I'm not zoomed out to the full canvas because then it just looks black. I actually want to be zoomed in to one so that I can see that, yeah, there are quite a few stars there. So I'm going to now right-click and go Color, Desaturate, and change to Luminosity, and you'll see that what's happened is it's just simply changed my stars to white dots in the sky. But because they were all different colors previously, they actually have different shades of white, gray, silver, that kind of thing. 
So I'm starting to get a bit of a Starfield looking thing going on here, but there's something missing. We don't really have any kind of flares or anything like that coming off. We don't have any kind of um, sparkle is what the GIMP calls it. So I'm going to right click and go filters, light and shadow, and sparkle. And what sparkle does is it just adds a little bit of a shimmer to points of light mm -hmm. and things like that. Because these are simple dots throughout our canvas, it's, it's pretty easy to work with. Luminosity threshold, you'd probably want it really, really low, not quite to zero, but I've got it at the very lowest setting, uh, 0 0.001. And my flare intensity, let's start at, say, 0 0.08. The rest of them I'm just going to leave as default, 24, 15, 1.0, and then zero the rest of the way natural colors, everything else, hit OK, and we'll just see how that looks. Okay, so that didn't make enough of a difference for me. So what we'll do, just kind of tweak our settings. I'm going to zoom back out to one, and let's run another filter here. Notice what I did is I hit Control Z to undo the last effect. Add Sparkle again, and let's change our uh, settings here just a little tiny bit. I'm going to bring up the flare intensity to say 0.14 and bring up my luminosity threshold to 0 0.003. And did you see that? Yeah, they just kind of popped out a little bit. I'm going to control Z to undo and then control Y to redo. And you see what's happened is some of them have just kind of brightened up a little bit. I'm going to show you what it's actually done. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and here's one of the stars here. And you can see that it's actually added a bit of a... bit of a glow to it. A bit of a glow. Yeah, that's a good word for it. And so we're really starting to get a star field kind of look. I wanna, I'm going to control Z, and I'm going, to add a, I'm going to make it a little bit heavier just for you at home so that you can see what this does. I'm going to increase my luminosity to 0 0.004 and my flare intensity to 0 0.18. Oh, <laughs> I still have my selection there. Let's try that again. Filters, repeat sparkle. There we go. So that's a much more extreme example. That's not quite what I would do, but I wanted to show you so that it can be really clearly seen on your screen what we're actually doing. We're adding this kind of a shimmer kind of sparkle. To those, uh, to those stars. So I'm going to go back into that. I've undone it, and I'm going to find the threshold that works for me. And, and a lot of it, and Krista, you know this from graphic design, but a lot of it is just kind of playing with the settings, it's trial and error. undoing yeah. and redoing, and, and going back and forth until you find that perfect threshold. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change based on um, the size of your canvas, mm -hmm. how many stars there are, how bright they are. Um, the sparkle, you know, the settings will be different based on those various things. So let's turn down our luminosity to 0 0.2 and flare intensity, let's try, uh, and that was 0 0.002, sorry, and flare intensity to 0 0.15. And there are the rest of the settings as well. And we'll hit OK and we'll see how that looks. That looks pretty good to me. How do you like that, Krista? Yeah, it looks nice and glittery. Yeah, nice and glittery, she says. Okay, so next step is we need to, now we've got a beautiful star field, and you can use that if you like star fields and you want to just go with that and set that as your desktop background. It's pretty perfect. Uh, looks really nice. But we want to add more. We want to go all out. Let's add a <laughs> planet. So what's involved in creating something as unique as a planet? Well, let's get over to, we're going to use the Google search engine today. And I'm going to go into image search, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to try rock texture, for example. Now you see that there are a ton of different textures here from earth rocks. What we want to do, because you may be using this, you may be distributing this, you may be sharing this, you may be putting it online. In our case, we're broadcasting it on the air. We want to make sure that we have the rights to use the photos that we're going to use. So let's go into search tools, usage rights, labeled for commercial reuse and modification. Mm -hmm. So now we're only looking at photographs of rocks that we are allowed to use royalty free and we're not going to have any kind of lawsuits or anything like that. So, so we're safe. Good, good tip. So we don't want cobblestones. That's not going to work for our planet surface. But you want to look and think, think, okay, well, what would look 
like a nice surface from space for a planet. If we wanted to go with something like a Mars-looking thing, maybe that would work really well. Um, what else could we go with? If one stands out to you, Krista, just say the word. I don't know. There's so many that could There's work in uh, different applications of it. So I'd I probably, just... I'd stay away from maybe the silverish kind of stone, go with something with a bit more color, because it's more interesting as far as against the night sky. Cool stuff, though, eh? So let's go back up to the top. I'm just going to grab one here. Let's pick, what we're doing here is we're picking the texture for our planet, what it's going to look like on the surface. I would say either something like that, or perhaps if we want to go something a little bit more um, scourged by space dust. Yeah. Something like that. You want to go with that? Yeah, why well, go subtle? Okay, so let's grab that image. We're going to go copy image location, go back to the GIMP and go file, open location, paste in the URL, and open it up. So now we need to make sure that our canvas is uniform square. So we're going to go image, canvas size, grab the smallest number and paste it into the largest number, and then hit resize. So now we've got a perfect square canvas, and you see that the, the actual um, image extends out past the canvas. So we need to right-click again and go layer, layer to image size. So now we've got that. So next up, we need to turn this into a planet. We're going to right-click, filters, distorts, and apply lens. Real simple. What we want to do with this is we want to adjust the lens refraction index to give that good round appearance to our planet. Notice that there are, you know, you see the edges there, but you do see a round circle mm -hmm. or a sphere it's a in there. It's 3D. Yeah, like and that. the more the more you refract it, the more round it's, you know, the more it's going to look like it's popped out. So we're going to find something that looks realistic. I'm finding with this canvas, which is about 2,500 pixels square, um, about a 1.8 to 1.9 is, is good. I'd say 1.8. So now we're going to do that. And there we go. Now, if this happens, I'm glad that this happened because this is... Um, this is something that may drive you nuts if you're not sure, okay, well, why did it all of a sudden give me this green stuff at the bottom? What happens there is that the color indexing of this particular file is off. Okay. So there's something wrong with the file, the source image, or um, it just doesn't manipulate very well out of the box. So what you can do in that case, watch this. I'm so glad that happened. Can't really explain those kinds of things. Okay, so Control-A to select all, Control-C is to copy into your clipboard and now paste as new image. So now I've created a new image with that image, but now uh, if all goes well and I repeat the apply lens, I'm not going to have that weird issue with the green at the bottom. There we go. Okay, so we've just solved that problem. I can close the original image, which I no longer need. Now you can see that you've got this nice sphere there, but it has the outer edge. So we're going to grab the circular marquee up at the top there, the ellipse. Grab the top left corner, drag down to the bottom right corner, hold in your left shift key to make it so that it's a perfect circle, and then just let go and drag that marquee just to the right spot and copy it to your clipboard. Okay. Now back at our space scene, we're just going to simply paste that in. You'll see that it is huge compared to our canvas, so that's not going to work. Let's paste into a new image. And now we're going to scale that. That's what it looks like now. Looking pretty good. Let's scale it. Let's go image, scale image, and we want it to be about 600 pixels based on the canvas size. So now copy and paste that. Oh, that's way too big still. Oh, wait. No, I'm zoomed in. Sorry. There we go. No, that's not so bad. Looks a little bit like Death Star right now. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to just position that anywhere on our canvas uh, without letting it crop out to the edges. But now with the, that layer selected, I want to right-click and go Alpha to Selection. So you see what I've done is I've created a marquee that is specifically around that planet. That's by right-clicking on the layer name and going Alpha to Selection. Now right-click and go Select. And we're going to grow that by... We said it was 600 pixels, so we want to do about 50% of that. So let's make it 50% uh, of that is 300 pixels. We're going to grow that selection by that much. Then we're going to feather.
the selection. And what that means is, of course, uh, we are up a bit. softening up those edges. I think, the, see, that's going outside of the uh, canvas. I don't want to make it that big. Again, we, we kind of play that with that a little bit, grow that. Let's make it a little bit less. Let's, let's try 150. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now feather the selection to soften the edge. We're working with a 1280, no, a 1920 by 1280 canvas, so my feather should be about 350 pixels to soften that edge. And now if I create a new layer and fill it in black, watch what happens. Not the layer, but the, my marquee. Now my planet has kind of disappeared as if it's, it's kind of there, as if it's covered by an eclipse. So now deselect and drag that layer and see what we're doing is we are actually creating a sh shadow on our planet. And we now have a planet that looks That looks pretty cool. Real. Okay, so real quick, now let's link those two layers together, the shadow and our planet, so that we can move it anywhere on the screen that we like. Let's move it on our canvas to, say, over here. And you'll notice that my stars are being covered by the shadow and that's not the case because they are actually in the distance so again let's right click on our planet alpha to selection then right click on our shadow and we're going to add a layer mask and that is based on the selection and now you'll see that the stars now shine through now where's that light coming from krista oh, from the top. that's the thing let's make a new layer yeah, it's coming from the top left area just like my demonstration image. But we, we want to create that light. So let's right click, I've created a new empty layer, filters. Notice this is something that I love about the GIMP. Krista, you probably, I don't know if you recognize this as I'm doing it, but one of the things that I do love about the GIMP versus Photoshop is that mm -hmm. I'm working with blank empty layers. I don't have to have a canvas that has material on it to manipulate. If I wanna right. add a lens flare, for example, I don't have to have, have something on the canvas mm -hmm. in order to flare it. I can work with a completely empty layer. You know what I mean? Cool. So that's what I, and I say that because that's exactly what I'm about to do, uh, which I think is kind of a downfall of Photoshop and an advantage to the GIMP, which is free. Filters. Light and shadow. Supernova. And we're going to position that where we think, this is a representation of our canvas. So let's position it where we think the light point should probably be color it white and let's start off with very few spokes because you don't want it to look too fake you want it to look like an ambient kind of burst of light get the radius up a little bit so that it's quite bright and then hit OK and there we go so now we've got a Sun we've got the shadow in approximately the right place which we can unlink the shadow and we can move that shadow if we want to improve the uh, the position of it and then we can change the mask so let's remove that delete the layer mask create a new mask from here there we go so then we end up with a, a more accurate representation of where the light would be falling and there you have it so another under five minutes flat pretty much mm -hmm. you can create that kind of an image we did it in about uh, 20 minutes tonight because we're, we're kind of walking you through yeah, everything Yeah, going step by doing. step. Yeah. Oh, but that's, cool. uh, that's as simple as it is. All right, well, there you have it. That is our uh, GIMP tip for this week. Make sure you tune in to more GIMP tips if you want to learn how to use the free Photoshop alternative GNU image manipulation program. Go to linuxtechshow.com and look for the, Linux, uh, look for the GIMP uh, tips there.